Welcome back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover James Allen, a British philosopher and writer known for his book on the law of attraction. We all believe that business success requires qualities that are selfish, callous, and collectively short-sighted. Honesty and business do not seem to go hand in hand. Our crony capitalist society today is so littered with corruption that it even appears that financial success requires the abandonment of morality. When we look at Wall Street, companies like Enron or people like Jeffrey Epstein, we do not see high examples of virtue. Corporate corruption has become so ubiquitous that capitalism has lost face. Most people now think business and moral degradation goes hand in hand. Our guest in this episode, however, argues otherwise. In fact, James Allen claims that he can measure the future success of a person by how moral he or she is. Such a claim would receive vigorous protest by many today, but James Allen actually explains why morality and success are one and the same. As always, let's start with a brief background. James Allen was born on November 28, 1864 in Leicester, England. He was born in a working class family. His father, William, was a factory knitter during the height of the textile industry. In 1879, when James Allen was just 15, his father died of a robbery and murder during a trip to New York City. James Allen was then forced to leave school and work during childhood. He began working as a private secretary and then moved to London where he earned a living by journalism and reporting. At the age of 34, he began writing for a magazine and shortly afterwards became a full-time writer. His most popular work is a famous book called As a Man Thinketh. This episode, however, will focus on his much less unknown but best work, Eight Pillars of Prosperity. Eight Pillars of Prosperity begins with an analogy. Just like a house is built on a foundation, success is also built on a foundation. A house cannot remain erect unless its foundation is built in accordance with the principles of physics. Similarly, a business cannot remain erect unless it is built on a moral foundation. The public knows that principles of physics cannot be violated. Therefore, they make sure that any house erected is built up to code. Spiritual laws, however, are not so obvious, so people think they are not as fixed and proceed to violate them. James Allen argues that this is a dangerous error. Prosperity rests upon a moral foundation. It is popularly supposed to rest upon an immoral foundation, that is, upon trickery, sharp practice, deception, and greed. One commonly hears even an otherwise intelligent man declare that no man can be successful in business unless he is dishonest. Thus, regarding business prosperity, a good thing has the effect of dishonesty, a bad thing. Such a statement is superficial and thoughtless and reveals a total lack of knowledge of moral causation, as well as a very limited grasp on the facts of life. To know a man's moral status would be to know, to mathematically gauge his ultimate success or failure. Individuals, families, nations grow and prosper in harmony with their growth in moral strength and knowledge. They fall and fail in accordance to their moral decadence. James Allen goes on to break down his moral foundation success depends on into eight pillars. Energy. Economy. Integrity. System. Sympathy. Sincerity. Impartiality. And self-reliance. James Allen remarks that only the first four pillars are required for success. The last four are amplifiers. There are higher spiritual lessons that transcend material wealth. Since most people are primarily concerned with money, we will focus on the first four pillars. The first pillar, energy, deals with industriousness. In other words, the very first pillar is good old fashioned hard work. Energy is a moral virtue. Its opposite, laziness and procrastination, are vices. A person with energy dedicates themselves fully to what they do. They are prompt, reliable, and even take the initiative of going beyond what is asked of them. 
James Allen states that no success can even remotely happen without energetic industry, making it therefore the very first base pillar. The second pillar is economy. This pillar deals with the concentration of capital. The person who economizes, saves and invests his money wisely. But economy goes further than the preservation of capital. A person who economizes also preserves his physical vitality by avoiding unhealthy habits. Economy can also be practiced in our spiritual forces, meaning avoiding mental dissipation such as gossip, drama, fear, and worry. Many people practice economy in their financial affairs, but fail to preserve their health and mental forces. Thus, they still fail at the second pillar. A business cannot become successful unless it uses all its human and financial resources efficiently, hence making economy the second pillar. The third pillar is integrity. Integrity is a business that is honest in all its transactions. It does not try to take more than it gives to the consumer. Any business who fails at this, according to James Allen, is practicing fraud. A fraudulent business may stand erect for some time, but at some point, the truth will reveal itself, and failure will come at last. We have seen examples of this with companies like Enron, Nikola, or Theranos. Fraudulent businesses who looked strong and erect for a time, but then toppled over their head once the truth came out. The last pillar is the most sophisticated of them all. System. A business with the first three pillars may last a good while, but finally, at some point, the lack of system will create so much confusion that at last, the business will fail. According to James Allen, a business cannot scale without system. It will remain perpetually small without this pillar. No business, no society, no civilization can ever exist without the use of system, hence why it is the fourth and highest pillar. Now let's address the elephant in the room. What about all the rich people we see today who we know are corrupt? People like Harvey Weinstein or Donald Trump. James Allen says a few words on a subject. His answer is that people are composite beings, meaning they have some admirable qualities and some bad qualities. Their success is due to their admirable qualities, not their bad ones. And their ultimate failure will be from their bad qualities. Take Elizabeth Holmes for an example, a person whose ethics I consider seriously questionable to say the least. As imperfect as she may be, and we all are, she also has admirable qualities. She's enterprising, she's a risk taker, she's very clever in marketing and dealing with investors, and so on. Sure, Theranos turned out to be a giant fraud, and that's what landed her a jail sentence, but what got her to the limelight was her virtues, not her fraudulence. In James Allen's words, a man may be honest in certain directions, yet suffer privations. A man may be dishonest in certain directions, yet acquire wealth. But the conclusion usually formed is that the one man fails because of his particular honesty, and that the other prospers because of his particular dishonesty. This is the result of a superficial judgment, which assumes that the dishonest man is almost totally corrupt, and the honest man almost entirely virtuous. In the light of a deeper knowledge and a wider experience, such judgment is found to be erroneous. The dishonest man may have some admirable virtues which the other does not possess, and the honest man obnoxious vices which are absent in the other. The honest man reaps the good results of his honest thoughts and acts. He also brings upon himself the sufferings which his vices produce. The dishonest man, likewise, garners his own suffering and happiness. Now, I have only scratched the surface of this spectacular work. I have read this book at least 50 times, because I wanted to ingrain its message into my subconscious. It is a culturally important work, and I recommend everyone in my audience read it. Link is in the description. Speaking of foundation, one way to build a good character is by traveling. You can expand your mind by exposing yourself to new locations on Cityscape and saving the ones you like. Once you have time, go to that spot and check in to get your stamp. Those of you who want to travel and meet new people should download the Cityscape app. 
To have the body of prosperity, its material presentation, we must first have the spirit of prosperity. And the spirit of prosperity is the spirit of moral value. Moral blindness prevails. Men see money, property, pleasure, leisure, etc., and mistaking them for prosperity, strive to get them for their own enjoyment. But when obtained, they find no enjoyment in them. Prosperity is at first a spirit, an attitude of mind, a moral power, a life which manifests outwardly in the form of plenty, happiness, joy. Just as a man cannot become a genius by writing poems, but must develop and acquire the soul of genius. So one cannot be prosperous by hoarding up money and by gaining property and possessions, but must develop and acquire the soul of virtue. Then the material accessories will follow as effect to cause. There is no joy in money. There is no joy in property. There is no joy in material accumulations or any material thing of itself. These things are dead and lifeless. The spirit of joy must be in the man or it is nowhere. He must have within him the capacity for happiness. He must have the wisdom to know how to use these things and not merely hoard them. He must possess them and not be possessed by them. They must be dependent upon him and not he upon them. They must follow him and not him forever running after them. And they will inevitably follow him if he has the moral elements within to which they are related. How can it be said of a wretched man that he is prosperous, even if his income be 10,000 pounds a year? There must be fitness, harmony, and satisfaction in a true prosperity. When a rich man is happy, it is that he brought the spirit of happiness to his riches, and not that his riches brought happiness to him. He is a full man with full material advantages and responsibilities. While the miserable rich man is an empty man looking to riches for that fullness of life which can only be evolved from within. Thus, prosperity resolves itself into a moral capacity and in the wisdom to rightfully use and lawfully enjoy the material things which are inseparable from our earthly life. Most people today think the business world is littered with corruption, and there is a dose of truth to that. Incidents like Enron, Nikola, or Elizabeth Holmes are great examples of such. Despite what you see on the news, however, the business world is mostly good. In fact, the reason why corporate corruption is so shocking is precisely because these incidents are disruptions from the norm. Had the business world been mostly or entirely corrupt, Civilization around us would crumble. There would be no food on your table, no items delivered to your door, your internet would stop working, and blackouts would be common. There are many countries that live like this today, such as where I'm from, Haiti. The business world is the very productive engine we live on. Without it, our lifeline is cut. The business corruption we currently see is a reflection of our culture. The problem is closer to home than we realize. As our moral compass degrades collectively, so will our business integrity. There is no us versus them. We are the businesses we criticize, whether as an employee, shareholder, or owner-operator. In other words, society is not collapsing because business is corrupt. It is the other way around. All cultural degradation is what's collapsing our society. Too many people today operate on a competitive plane of business, making gains at the expense of others. We need more entrepreneurs operating on a creative plane, making sure each business transaction adds to the life of others. In other words, too many flippers and speculators, not enough producers and creators. As James Allen said, when we take the moral path, whether as an individual or collective, we ascend into higher levels. We do not need to be morally perfect by any means. The first four pillars are all that's required. 
We do, however, have a duty to try our best. As parting note, I have a question for you. What would you rather be? Blessed or rich? Leave your thoughts in the comment section. As for me, I think I can be both. See you next time.